uh, Masai Graham talking to my colleagues on BBC Breakfast. Now, here's a story most parents will be familiar with. How long can you drive for on the motorway before your child throws a tantrum? New research shows that the average child asks, are we nearly there yet? Just 32 minutes into a car journey and has a backseat meltdown after an hour and 10 minutes. To make matters worse, experts at Nottingham Trent University say that for each extra sibling in the car, the tantrum is brought forward by 10 minutes. That's it from me for today. Have a good day and do stay with us here on BBC News. with Lucy Hawkins on BBC World News. Ousted Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan is facing terrorism charges. Hundreds of his supporters are outside his home vowing to prevent his arrest. The charges follow a speech he made at the weekend. Conflicting theories about who was behind a car bomb near Moscow which killed the daughter of a key Putin ally. Ukraine dismisses claims that it was involved. The lights will stay off on Shanghai's iconic skyline, all to save power as a severe drought affects electricity supplies. And millions of children return to school in the Philippines for the first time in two years because of the pandemic. In the next half hour, we'll be live in Karachi, Nairobi, Beijing and Pennsylvania. Let's begin in Pakistan, where Imran Khan, who until April was the Prime Minister, has been charged under the country's anti-terror laws. Now, he hasn't yet been arrested. Hundreds of his supporters, as you can see here, have gathered outside his home in Islamabad. They are promising to take over the capital if police try to detain him. But what we've heard in the last hour is from the court, who has granted him three days of bail, and that protects him from immediate detention. This is a row that centres over comments made by by Imran Khan at a rally on Saturday when he condemned Islamabad's chief of police and a female judge for the detention and alleged mistreatment of a colleague. And the words which triggered the charges, you should get ready as we will take action against you, appear to have been interpreted as a direct threat. Television news channels have been banned from broadcasting Mr Khan's speeches live, saying he was inciting hatred against the state. Well, let's have a listen to him speaking on Sunday evening. That's after he learned of the ban and he still remained defiant. Big celebrations there in Singapore. Let's just show you the latest pictures we have from Pakistan where uh, Imran Khan, the former Prime Minister, has been charged under the country's anti-terror lords over comments he made at a rally on Saturday. Lots of reaction coming in. We'll keep you across the story here on BBC World News. Do stay with us. We're live with Lucy Hawkins on BBC World News. Ousted Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan is facing terrorism charges. <laughs> Hundreds of his supporters are outside his home right now. They're vowing to prevent his arrest. The charges follow a speech he made at the weekend. Conflicting theories about who was behind a car bomb near Moscow, which killed the daughter of a key Putin ally. Ukraine has dismissed claims it was involved. Children in the Philippines are back in school after almost two years in one of the longest COVID lockdowns in the world. 
The lights will stay off on Shanghai's iconic skyline to save power as a severe drought hits electricity supplies. In the next half hour, we'll take you live to Manila and Windsor Castle, and we'll hear from our correspondents in Islamabad, Moscow, and Kiev. Start in Pakistan, where Imran Khan, who until April was the Prime Minister, has been charged under the country's anti terror laws. He hasn't yet been arrested, and hundreds of his supporters have gathered outside his home now in Islamabad, and they are promising to take over the capital if police try to detain him. In the last couple of hours, though, we have heard from a court who has granted him three days of bail, and what that will do is protect him from any immediate detention. This is a row that centers over common made by Imran Khan at a rally on Saturday when he condemned Islamabad's chief of police and a female judge for the detention and alleged mistreatment of a colleague. The words which triggered the charges were, you should get ready as we will take action against you. They appear to have been interpreted as a direct threat. Television news channels have been banned from broadcasting Mr Khan's speeches live, saying he was inciting hatred against the state. Well, speaking on Sunday evening, after learning of the ban, he remained defiant. Now let's take you to Singapore where there have been celebrations after the Prime Minister announced an end to the country's ban on gay sex. A coalition of LGBT rights groups called it the first step towards full equality and a triumph of love over fear. The colonial era law that criminalised gay sex had long been criticised by activists even though it hasn't been actively enforced for years. So celebrations amongst many groups in Singapore. See you again in a few minutes' time, and don't forget you can reach me on Twitter. I'm Lucy Hopkins. You're live with Lucy Hawkins on BBC World News. Ousted Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan is facing terrorism charges. <laughs> Hundreds of his supporters are outside his home, vowing to prevent his arrest. The charges follow a speech he made at the weekend. Presidential election loser in Kenya, Raila Odinga, challenges the results in the country's Supreme Court. A BBC investigation uncovers a huge online community that was secretly sharing thousands of explicit images and videos. And we'll hear how this dish had the ingredient to make the funniest joke at the Edinburgh Fringe from the prize-winning comedian himself. Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan has been charged under the country's anti-terror laws. He hasn't yet been arrested and hundreds of his supporters have gathered outside his home in Islamabad. Glastonbury on the horizon for DJ Archie. We'll keep an eye on him. You've been live with Lucy Hawkins. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Hello there. Let's take a look at some of the bigger weather stories going on across the globe, starting with North America.